Welcome to the American Academy of Grief Counseling's videogram on pet loss grief support counseling. And this is a, a rather sensitive issue because we all love animals for the most part. I mean, if you don't love an animal, usually there's something wrong with you. If a dog doesn't like someone, I usually trust the instincts of my dog. So animal loss is something that I think is very painful. In any movie we watch, if the animal dies, it's always the saddest part of the movie. So love of animals is something that I think comes natural to any really good hearted individuals and especially people or individuals who own pets, dogs, cats, horses, or any other type of pet. Uh, if you own one, you know the loss of one is an extremely painful moment in your life. And I myself have owned Siberian Huskies my whole life and every phase there's been some type of loss that has occurred, but there's also been other ones that have come and continued the love affair with, with these types of animals. But then one of them passes on and then another takes its place. Uh, and this is this a cycle for many pet owners. Some pet owners might not be able to take this type of cycle and one pet and a loss of a particular dog or cat or horse might be too much and they never again have another pet. But this is something that I think that is very touching to many of us uh, and something that affects us more than we would like to admit when we lose one of our friends. I believe George Carlin said it best that, for referring to uh, pets, that life is a series of dogs. And that's the case for a lot of owners of pets, especially dog owners. So pet loss is something that is a real loss. It's not something that is to be understated or undervalued. A bond of a pet for some is like family. And for some pets are literally the children of the particular owner. Uh, some individuals have no children and their dogs or their cats are their life. Unfortunately, we have a lot of individuals outside of the pet community who downgrade the value of the pet. And we see a lot of dis uh, dis disenfranchisement. And this disenfranchisement makes us feel that our loss is not as important. Uh, many might downplay it and say, it was only a dog. It was only a cat. Uh, at least it wasn't a family member or it's not a big deal, get over it. So this type of disenfranchisement is an issue that pet owners have to deal with on a consistent basis. Uh, the value of a pet is something that I think those outside of the pet community can never really understand. For many, it's the first experience of loss. You have a young child, Maybe they have a goldfish and the goldfish uh, dies overnight. And you always watch uh, television programs, uh, sitcoms, stuff, how they try to hide that loss maybe. And they try to uh, put a new fish in so the child doesn't realize that the fish has died. Uh, so these are examples of unintentionally uh, stripping from that young child the first experience of loss and how they can learn that death is a reality and so forth. So the first experience of a loss could be a fish or it could be a little bit more serious. It could be a dog where uh, you look way back into your memory and you remember the death of the family dog or the family cat. So with that said, the value of a pet plays an important value in the pet's relationship to the family and to the individuals. Pets are family to some, uh, pets are our children to others. Uh, for some, the elderly especially, pets are their only uh, communication with other beings on this planet. So what is the innate value of a pet from fish to, to cat to dog and so forth? And it's hard to make that judgment for some individuals. And that's where we look at disenfranchisement and disorder. 
uh, where do they part? Uh, where, do, where is it to a point where an individual who is grieving the loss of, a, of an animal uh, becomes someone who should be comforted and not disenfranchised, but instead they enter into a level of pathological, pathological uh, disconnection, so to speak, from reality. So if an individual has a goldfish and that goldfish dies and they're grieving for it for the next 10 years, uh, that, that's a pathology, obviously. It's not disenfranchisement at all, but uh, that's an obvious disorder. So what is the connection? What is the bond? And how does it correlate? Someone who owns a horse their whole life, and that horse has been part of their life, and they rode the horse on their ranch or on their farm, and the horse suddenly dies, uh, there's going to be obviously a greater connection. And that's not to say that we should disregard someone who loses maybe the simplicity of a fish, but obviously the bond is not as much. I, I did recently uh, over uh, social media read that someone had lost a fish. It was a saltwater fish in particular. It was a powder blue tang and she had had it for 15 years and it suddenly died and she was grieving over the weekend. I, I think that's a little bit more of an attachment for a fish than most would have. 15 years is still 15 years and so forth. Obviously the bond cannot be as deep as with uh, a, a dog or a cat or a horse, but there's still a bond that needs to be recognized in that. But again, pathological connections can occur with animals that go beyond uh, the norm and so forth. So we don't wanna disenfranchise uh, loss of a pet, but we also want to be on the lookout for what might not be within the norm of standards. The death of a pet, though, is a, a dramatic thing for many of us, as I pointed out. Uh, we already spoke a little bit about how children should learn from the death of a pet, and it should not be hidden. So commemoration uh, of the pet is important, I feel. Uh, commemoration can be done through keepsakes, uh, keeping of the ashes and remains, such as in the case of this puppy box here. You can also have a shadow box where you keep a picture of the pet. Uh, for a dog, you can keep the collar itself. In the past, you weren't able to keep the ashes as much. So I think being able to have the dog or the cat or the horse cremated and then having them given to you is, is a very important process. Uh, some individuals will even have a funeral for their particular pet. But in essence, I think a lot of individuals, when they say goodbye to their pet, especially spiritual individuals, in essence, I think they have a difficult time because they feel they'll never see their pet again. And that's where we come across the rainbow bridge. For those of you who believe that there is more to this world, that there is an afterlife, the rainbow bridge helps kind of continue the connection that one day we'll see all of our furry friends again. And uh, that's something that I like to think about that when I pass over, you know, I'll come across into heaven and meet the Lord and so forth. But every single dog I ever owned will be in a big open field running and come greet me with a bunch of uh, kisses and affection and so forth, a bunch of licks on my face and so forth. And I think that's a wonderful thought. And I think many of us who own pets have that thought too, that the rainbow bridge exists and we will again one day see are our friends because they are important to us. A new pet, well, after your pet dies, uh, your dog or your cat, a new one can heal. But I think it's important to note that a new pet is not a replacement. It's not so much like a pair of clothing or a pair of shoes that you can replace. So some individuals, I think, are uh, afraid that if they purchase uh, a new dog, that that new dog is replacing the old dog and so forth. And that's not the case. Uh, in fact, some individuals have two dogs, one older, one younger, so that the transition when one passes is not as harsh. Uh, I said in the beginning though, that some individuals 
very much so may not be able to deal with the loss and may never be able to have a, another dog or another cat. And that's completely understandable as well. If you're unable to, again, love that way, and it hurts so much that you don't want to invest the time in another uh, pet, then that's perfectly fine as well. If you'd like to learn more about our program that we offer in pet loss grief support, uh, we have our site up at the top here, and we also have a request for information that you can review. And if you'd like to call us directly, you can reach us at 330-652-7776. Again, it's 330-652-7776. And our email here is info at AIHCP.org. Like our basic grief counseling program, our pet loss uh, support specialist program is online. It's independent study, and it has the same uh, qualifications that are required for grief counseling. Uh, Dr. Jennifer Melvin teaches the, the primary courses in the pet loss grief. And uh, if you're interested in learning more about these courses, please review uh, the site that I listed and uh, let me uh, let us know here at the office if you need anything else. Other than that, uh, we see here an image, I think it's fitting of the rainbow bridge and it's a cloud image of, of, of a lost pet. And if you've lost a pet before and uh, you feel that grief, know you're not alone, that it should never ever be downgraded or reduced to not important. You lost someone that is very important. And I use the word someone because our pets are as important as people. Uh, they shouldn't be considered uh, as something that is less important in this world. And I think that's important to remember. So I'd like to thank you for listening today. And I hope uh, you have a good day. 